Yes, sir, you heard that right. Six Figure Agency Owner answers all of your beginner and advanced SMMA-related questions. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight to the value. So, question number uno, what is your favorite book? Do you have any book recommendations for entrepreneurs? Well, I'll tell you my favorite book of all time and single-handedly the one book that is made me the most money is never lose a customer. Now, I could get into the whole detail. I can make a whole YouTube video. Actually, as a matter of fact, I have made a whole video about this book, but it is hands down the best book in the world for business because we all know that keeping our current customers is easier than, than acquiring new ones. Keeping our current customers is cheaper than acquiring new ones. Our current customers will make us more than acquiring a new one. So we all know that you know keeping our customers is better than anything else, yet nobody knows how to do that. And this book talks about that. Best recommendation, if I were to talk about some other books, as you can see, I have some books on my shelf. Best recommendations uh, that I've read that I think are phenomenal for any young entrepreneur to read would be The Winner Effect. Okay, that one is right there by Ian Robertson, if you can see it. The Winner Effect, phenomenal, amazing book. $100 million offers is kind of a staple, uh, but granted, that's more for, I would say, once you're running ads and stuff, and once you're actually running sort of some sort of landing page slash lead magnet, but still an incredible book nonetheless. And if I had to give... If I had to give one more, I have more books over here too. Man, there's so, so many good books. I'd say Atomic Habits is a classic. There's so many other really good books, um, like Secrets of Closing the Sale by Zig Ziglar, um, Rage by Bob Woodward, um, a lot of other amazing books that you can see. Um, the Lynchpin by Russell Brunson is also amazing. And so those are some some of the books that I really, really love. But if I were to give you two books, uh, Never Lose Customer and $100 million Offers are the go-to ones. So that is my favorite book and best book recommendations. Next question coming to Alexander. Service. Once I acknowledge the problems of a niche, what services should I start providing in order to not be seen as a commodity? Great question. So if you want to be seen as somebody who is valuable and somebody who solves a lot of problems, then well, first you've done the right thing, which is analyze all the problems. And then how you create a service around that is you figure out what is the problem? What mechanism or system can I build to solve the problem? So if the problem is no conversions, um, you could look at, well, what's the reason for the no conversions? You could have a better landing page. You could have a better VSL. You could have a better doctor sequence, you could have better nurturing, you could have better sales assets, you could teach people how to close better. And so there's abundance of things you could do and build out to have a better offer. And so I guess the main way to do this is once you've figured out, hey, this, these are the main problems, list out every which way you could solve that problem when it comes up and that's how you would make your service uh, around that specific problem. Question number three, do you have a good SOP template? The fuck? No, because there's no template for SOPs because every SOP for different things are different. So how I make an SOP is, well, when I need to make one, I then just write down what are the SOP step lists, what, what are the checklists for creating the SOP, and that's how you make the SOP, okay? There's no SOP to make an SOP. There you go. There's no SOP to make an SOP except for to write down step-by-step step what happens to make this thing work, all righty? Hope that helped. What books? Oh, here we go. Recommend five books that would help grow our agencies and mental mind. Well, I've already given you guys some. So how about I give you guys some that I have not read, but that I'm going to read that I think could be really good. So let me pull these up and uh, I have them in my cart on Amazon and share them with you guys. So uh, number one is Ogilvy. Wow. Why can't I say David Ogilvy? David Ogilvy on advertising is one I'm going to read. Um, Story Selling is another one I'm going to read uh, by Nick Esk Nanton. Uh, some other books that I really, really want to read are Hook, P- Hook Point, How to Stand Out in a Three Second World by Brendan Kane. Um, Seth Godin, All Marketers are Story are Tell Stories. Okay, um, Raving Fans, it's a book about uh, Donald Trump. Those are all books that I want to read and I think are incredible given what I'm interested in. Now, if I had to give some other books, like more books than I've already said before, first off, I recommend do the work first, then read books, right? Like you don't need like, okay, let's common, let's, let's do, let's, let's cause some controversy here. You need to stop reading fucking books if you want to get rich. Okay. The reason I said is because most of you read books, book, 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 but you don't apply anything. And so there's no good in reading a book if you can't actually apply the knowledge that you learn from that book to make more money. And so my unpopular opinion of the day is stop reading and start doing. Okay, books are great when you're, when, when you're in that phase of learning and when you need to acquire new knowledge, but most of you have the knowledge you need to make at least 10, 20, 30K. You just need to go out there and do it. So that is, is what I'd recommend. Now, if I had to give you one more book, one more value bomb while you're here, I'm looking at the book, seeing which one I like the best. Cash for tithing. 
Cash Advertising, one of the best books I've ever read, uh, all about advertising, copy, sales, etc. Great book. Okay, so there you go. Hope that that inspired you and gave you some ideas. But realistically, stop reading books and start doing. Okay, that's a better way to do this. Next question: God slash Christianity and SMMA. I'm pretty new in, in discovering God and Christianity, and I and I wondered if SMA were a sinful way to make money. I know that you used to fall into SMA, and I think that you are a Christian, correct? But I'm not completely sure. I, wa- I just want to clarify, I'm not walking down a sinful money-making path. Now, the answer, the short answer is, well, I guess, how could I say? I'm not God. I can't say, oh, this is this. But by the Bible, okay, by the Word of God... Um, I guess you can you I would recommend you do your own reading and come to your own conclusion. But sin I like listen, by for context, I'm by no means the most educated person. I'm so new on this journey, I have so much stuff I need to learn. But my mind is it's only sinful if I was doing something unethical, if I was doing only fans management, or if I was um, helping people do something that was unethical. But if you are helping another individual and you truly help them. And it's something that they help other people. I don't see how that is sinful. For example, let's say you help fitness. You help personal trainers. I don't see how you helping them get more clients that they can help and become more fit is a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. And so, listen, my friend. Do your own reading. Read the Bible. Go through and, and see what, what, what you think and how you interpret it. But no, I do not think that, especially, I think at the end of the day, God looks at your heart, right? God measures things by your intent. And if your intent is to truly help people and, and it's, and it's good, right? You're not helping like uh, haram things. Okay. I know I'm saying haram, even though I'm Christian, but <laughs> it's funny for people. But I think the point is if your intent is good and you have a pure heart and your goal is to really try and help people, I, no, SMA is not a sinful way to make money in any way, shape or form, unless you, unless you do it in a sinful way. So more of the story is just don't make money in a sinful way. Don't do things that are uh, against the, commandments don't do don't do things that are quote unquote deemed bad right help people out is like the best thing help people out and you'll be good to go okay now listen like i said do your own research i am i am not god i am not telling you what to do read the bible do your own research and then you can make your own conclusions from there that is just me okay so no i do not think uh, that i truly believe that doing sma is a sinful to make money as a matter of fact i would argue that working a corporate job is a more sinful way of making money because i don't think that those people provide any now i shouldn't say this this is actually terrible of me to say but i like if I had to compare the two, what real value are you providing for people? I'm not sure. And so I like to help as many people as I can have as big of an impact as I can. And I feel that I can only do that running my own business. Anyways, let's move on. Cause I know nothing. I'm a newbie already setting expectations. Oh, this is such a good question. I hope you guys are fucking listening. Cause this will make you a ton more money. Alrighty. So yo bro, I generated client results, but they didn't follow what I said. It was because of wrong expectations. My question is how do you probably set expectation and when to beautiful question. Now this is an amazing question and will make you a ton more money. So what you have to do is after you have signed your client and you have onboarded them, you need to have an expectation setting call. You need to literally have a call where you have an entire slideshow or you could talk whatever you want and just set expectations be like, here's how it's going to work. And you literally straight up tell them that. And you, and these are all expectations. You set expectations for them. You set expectations for yourself. You set expectations to make sure you guys are both on the same page because the only reason why somebody would churn is one or two things. One, if they don't get what they signed up for two, if you just don't get the results. And so if people like, uh, one of the things why relationships or people would churn in a business is simply, I said those two things, but there's also one other thing. And it's that people, had a different expectation from what they actually got. And so when people's expectations differ from reality, they're going to be upset and therefore they will leave. And so to make people stay and to have really, really good client retention and and client satisfaction is make sure you guys are on the same page. So quite literally create and have a client expectation call. Do it after the onboarding call or you can do it during the onboarding call and you literally just go through all the expectations. You say, hey, here are the expectations on my end. Here are them on your end, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great question though. Okay. And that's a a phenomenal question and, and a very advanced question that I think a lot of people People can go with, but um, I guess uh, end of the day, right? You need to have an expectation setting call, and you need to create need expectations. Something. Can you say it again, bro? They're listening to me. Mm. Whoa, that's scary. <laughs> I don't know, bro. That's actually crazy. They're always listening. Like literally, you you say something, your phone will run ads about it in in a day. It's crazy. Anyways. So to answer your question, you have to have a setting expectation call, have a slideshow of, of expectations that, that, that you're setting with your client for you and for your client, right? Set expectations for your client, for you, if that makes sense. Like also set expectations for yourself and for the client. See, you are both on the same page. You can always refer back to that. Alrighty. Great question though. Last two here. Niche. 
Yo, bro, how is trading slash crypto coaches niche for content monetization? Currently, I am working with two of them. One has around 60K followers. Other has over 40K, and I've gotten him around 10 million views in the last five months and over 20K generated in paid membership. Other account, I have grew him from 0 to 40K in three to four months. I don't understand the question. I don't. Listen. I try my best to be nice, but sometimes I'm a dickhead. I don't even understand the question you're asking. How is trading crypto coaches niche for content? How is it? How, how do you, what do you mean how? Is it good? Like, is it scalable? Like, what do you mean how is trading? Is it a good niche? I don't know. I'm not in the niche. But if I were to take an assumption, which is never a good thing to do, but if I were to assume what your question is implying, I would say that your niche Right, trading crypto coaches uh, is definitely a good niche for for if you do content monetization because it's one of the the most scalable things, especially with content. And so, from that perspective, if you create content in communities, etc., and you help uh, crypto and trading coaches, yes, it is a scalable business model. Now, if we're going to talk about sinful way of making money, most of those trading crypto coaches are scammers and unethical. So, if we were to go back to the question before, which is God and Christianity and SMMA, sinful. Because they scam people. So be careful, okay? But listen, I am not allowed to judge. I shouldn't be judging. I am wrong for that. I'm not allowed to judge. That is not my, my ability to do. And so you can do as you wish, right? God has given us the free will to do whatever we want to do, right? That is his gift to you. Now, last question we got here. One to three. Hmm. I used to run one campaign for my client, a free webinar, and we did two split tests every two to three days. Now the client wants me to do three campaigns, a free webinar, a free cookbook, and a bit cheap paid program. What do you think I should do? I don't even think I have time to write the ad copies and make all the ad credits. Holy moly. Well, there's a ton of different ways we can approach this question and, and approach the solution to this. The first off is why does he want to run three of them? Why? Does the first one not make money? Like, if you, like, at the end of the day, you should primarily, you should, the way I like to think of this is you should advertise just one thing, like one offer. And so you really dial it in, really, really dial it in. You have it on the back burner. You can just leave it as be, and then you can start a new offer. You shouldn't start trying three different things at three different times because how much ad budget does the person have? Does the person have enough ad budget to adequately, adequately um, put onto these three campaigns? I don't know. Um, then talk about different creatives. Now you have to have different indoctrination sequences. It could be an absolute absolute mess, an absolute nightmare to do three different things. So if I were you, I would recommend, hey, let's do one, let's dial it in, let's get really, really good at it, and then let's scale the heck out of the, out of the best one. So that's what I would do if I were you. Um, I'm just trying to look at the question, a bit cheap program, like this is just, I don't know why your client needs to do three different things. We all, we all know the rule, uh, the rule of energy, right? Which is that we are one big ball of energy and everything we do in a day or in our life diverts our energy. And so if, if let's say, for example, you were one big ball of energy and you had six different businesses, or let's say four, make it easy. One, two, three, four. You would only be able to spend 25% of your energy on each business. That probably wouldn't do very well because you're splitting all your energy. The same way in which not even like the energy of your client, the energy of the ad budget, your energy is getting split in so many different ways that you can't really do good at all. There's a famous saying that, that goes, he who tries to be good at everything ends up being good at nothing. And that basically implies if you try and do everything really good, you end up doing nothing good at all because you can't help everybody. And that's a, that's a rule that we need to apply with everything in our life, right? You can't run seven different businesses, okay? You can't wear every single hat in your agency. You can't do like all these things. You should focus on one thing and become extremely specialized and good at that one thing. So from that perspective, I would say this is a stupid idea. But then again, I don't know the entire context of this. Maybe your client is a billionaire and he has a 50K a month ad budget, Okay, and then this would make sense. Maybe he has an entire team, a team for the cookbook, a team for this, a team for that. Now, I have to assume that's probably not the case. And so in that case, I would say this is probably a bad idea. But then again, that's my advice to you, my criticism, what I would do if I were in your shoes. I would go to me, yo, listen, we don't need to do three. We need to dial in one and just do one until we get really good at the one. Because if we do three, our ad budget is going to be split. Our attention is going to be split. Our tests are going to be split. We're going to be trying to figure out what indoctrination sequence is here, there. Our energy, our time is going to be split across multiple different things. It's going to be confusing. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. It does not make sense to do this. Let's dial in one first and get it really good. Then we can go from there. That's what I would do, my friend, if I were in your shoes. And uh, this goes back to setting camp uh, setting expectations, right? Setting expectations. The theory, I guess, the uh, the entire motive, the entire thing for this call, the, the the theme, if you will, has been client 
delivery, client onboarding, client expectations. And it's one of the most important things that is heavily overlooked in SMMA. And as a matter of fact, it's one of the things that I pride myself in is having some of the best customer experience and, and I guess just customer satisfaction in general because I put such huge emphasis on that because I am deeply insecure that I will not get my clients results. And so therefore, I do everything to go above and beyond to make sure I get my clients amazing results. What's results? And me making more money because my clients are happier. Also, as a matter of fact, Literally, you want the best you want the best tip in life is make a good product because if you make a good product, your clients will do the marketing and the selling for you. Your product will start to sell itself. Imagine you make such a good product, your clients are so happy that they start telling everybody else about it. Think about it. In your life, do you have a thing, a product or a company which is so good do you talk about it? I do. Amazon, all the time, I, I tell it to everybody how amazing Amazon is. Why? Because they have created the, the most exceptional experience for me as a customer. And so therefore, I literally sell it to my parents and everybody else. As in like, I tell them, hey, go with Amazon. Amazon's the best. I'm always talking about it because they've done such a good job. Such a good job, which is why. And one of the things that Jeff Bezos talks about is, is his uh, obsess- obsession over customers. And it's evident that he is very, very customer centric, Right, which means that he puts a huge emphasis and focus on how can we make the customers' li- customers' lives better. There's a really good video on this by Sam Evans called "Eating Your Customers' Complexity," which talks about finding every single possible way which your clients could have some sort of friction with your service and eating that complexity yourself and figuring out a way to solve it. Whether that costs money, time doesn't matter. Solve it because every which way you can make your clients' lives better will pay you dividends for life because people will start to literally sell your product for you. We all know the best form of sales are referrals. Why? They're easier to sell. They have a faster buying cycle. They already know, like, trust us. And we don't even have to pay to acquire them. And so everybody loves referrals. How do we get referrals? We have a good product. So we need to put my emphasis on our product. However, I will say if you are not at 50K a month, do not, do not focus on your product. Literally just focus on setting saka, setting and closing appointments. That's it. That's the only thing you should focus on if you're less than 50K a month. Is set and close appointments because you cannot make a good service if you don't have clients to reference that service from. So take this advice. If you are above 50K, which is the make of the product, if you're below 50K, only focus on setting and closing appointments. That's the only thing that, that matters for you in your life in this point in time is you just need to set and close, bro. That's literally it. Do not focus on anything else other than setting and closing appointments. Become a master at setting and closing appointments. So if you want a book for that, Secret, the secret of closing the sale by Zig Ziglar, uh, right down do 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 there, and then right above that, Persuasion, another great book, um, another one that's obviously is how to win friends and influence people, another great book, and overall, the best book for sales. Well, no, there is no best book for sales, but a really good way to become better at sales is learn to communicate better, learn to uh, express your thoughts and your ideas, learn to listen to people. Those are probably the two best things. As a matter of fact, you know some of the best. Salespeople in the world. As a matter of fact, let me make a video on this in a minute. The best salespeople in the world are therapists. Why? Well, you agree with everything they say. Well, why? Because you feel like they were listening to you and then gave you advice directly based on your situation. And therefore, you pay them a ton of money. They've sold you on their idea of what you should do. Selling happens 24-7. Therapists are great salesmen. That being said... Hope you enjoyed this episode, episode number two of uh, Six Figure Agent Sony. Uh, Six Figure Agent Owner answers every single question. Peace.